press and we're working on Amiga 2000 stuff today. What do I got? What did I buy? But I came across this. Now I had one of these in a different format. I had a, this is a Nakamichi. I had a Nakamichi MBR7 which was a big hunkin uh, 7 disc CD-ROM changer. And it was scuzzy and an external and I liked it a lot. I found one on eBay for like $169. I'm not paying $169 for a freaking CD-ROM. So what I did was uh, I found this Nakamichi 5 disc. This is a MJ5-16. It's a 16x CD-ROM 5 disc changer. It's also SCSI. Has all the jumpers and everything we need to make it work on this old girl. But Chris, this is a vampire. It has IDE. Yes, but I have that 4008 card that's in here. And uh, even though I am currently running Coffin R50, I don't know, 7, 6, 6, uh, you know, it doesn't matter. It's just a bunch of DOS drivers. Ha! There's our guest star. I need to give that thing a name. There is a metal tray on this thing with this little nub and this metal thing, which is a really good match in color, actually. And uh, it looks pretty nice. But it's not going to work because it won't fit in the tray. It's wider than five and a half inches or five and a quarter inches. This should work fine. So I'm going to remove this tray here real quick. And we're going to take a peek at what it looks like. Oh man, that's like... Now it's a normal CD-ROM. But what I do like about this uh, five disc is the SCSI cable is this way. So I don't have to worry about fighting it with the power supply. It'll plop up real nice. How am I going to get this to uh, work with the Amiga? We're going to use the GVP card here and for starters I am not going to mount this. I'm just going to plug it in and it's just going to go right here in the GVP card. Initialization on these is unique because it has to go through all five, well on my other one, seven, all five of the trays to make sure every disc it has is readable so it will increase your boot time so let's fire this up it will take a little longer to boot vampire is vampire logoing this is still blipping to get all of its dudes now it doesn't matter what ID this is because there is nothing on it there's no other devices on my SCSI chain at the moment and the color is very close. So like I said about extended boot time, is you're going to see this GVP SCSI light just flash for about 30 seconds to make sure nothing else on the SCSI bus. And then the vampire will start loading. It'll re-kick. And then it'll reinitialize. I'm not using the CD file system. I'm going to use the ASIM driver. So I had to copy that to L. And now I'm, I edited my mount list for one drive. ID number five, didn't put a loon number on it yet. I'm just seeing if this works. That a thousand, hang on. See, these are, these are real Amiga problems. I'm not gonna bore you with me fixing all this crap. I wanna fix it and then tell you what I did, how you can make your life easier if you decide to not purchase this. So I put my ASIM CDFS disc in and I'm gonna say install ASIM. Oh, now it has a read error. Come on, disc, hold in there. You can do it. Installation completed. Eject. Reboot. All right, unable to open 55, 65. That sucks. Holy crap. So it worked. I have a boo-boo on my devs DOS drivers. I put another CD in, disc number two. Title unknown. At least it sees it. I'm going to use uh, Play CD, but I have to edit the icon first so I can tell it GVP SCSI device. I'm just going to reboot this one more time. I see title unknown, so it did detect that disk. Can't open CD5 or 6. And that's because they don't exist. Alright, so here's one, here's two. Let's see what we got. We're going to go plus, 
Prime Relay. Oh, I remember these. There's all my two CDs working. It's got a lot of files on it. Alright, so I think I figured it out. I told this sucker it was a Nakamichi MBR7. So this is the CD prefs program for ASIM. And you'll see here on CD0, I'm GVP SCSI device unit 5, but it's 005. When I click the CD1 here, logic unit 1, ID5, 2, 3, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and this will be my last one. So my two CDs are right here at the top. This one's an audio CD, and uh, it should be able to play uh, ASIM tunes, which is running on the other monitor. Dang it. I don't have the audio cable hooked up. But it's playing. I don't know it's playing. Well, I put the headphone jack into here, but my CD-ROM light's just jamming along. And every once in a while this will blink. So I can say stop. Wish this had a, uh, this have a screen mode. Ah, nice. I don't know what my uh, screen mode is. I know I'm 60. 60. Yeah, I don't know what I chose. Is there a work workbench use? Alright, cool. Now let me put it back. So now I can actually use it on the vampire screen. This video sucks. Alright, stopping. Let's load it up full of discs. Let's go to disc three. Let me get this out of here. Let's go back to audio out the back. Number five. I paid $30 for this drive. The guy wanted 70 a piece. I offered 30. He accepted. Bob's your uncle. So, what do I see? I see nothing on the Amiga screen right now because this is figuring out what it's going to do. Depending on which button I push is what disc I'll get. So I'll push button number one. number one after it reads this disc I forgot how much of a pain in the butt these were I have no idea what it's doing right now and there they all just popped up all right so we have a music CD we have another one we have another one and we have Aminet all accessible at the same time I guess let's hit Aminet there it is all right let's go Aminet wow isn't there an Assigns OS 3.0? Ooh. Utilities. I don't know what this is. That's great. So that's the Aminet disc. That's in number four. This is in number... What is that? AIFF. Really? That's Icons. I guess that's playing. Alright, well, we'll let that go. This is my uh, acquired uh, disc. Oh, can I switch this to view? And that's switching to disc one. Spinning up. And it should start popping icons like mad, like it did before. Resize. There we go. Okay, so then it resized it. And it's a bunch of uh, PC backup files yeah spinning that disc down you'll see the scuzzy light goes solid it figures out it's going to disc three here it'll spin it up this will go that'll start showing content i hope disc is spinning if i can get it in the list mode it'll make life easier There they are. And that's that. Now, I'm not getting the errors that I was getting. Let's load up the last disc. When I hit this, it's going to eject them all, I think. Aminet 5, you'll see, oops, all five discs again. Right now it's reading disc 5. You'll hear the changer run, and then it's going to go back and read 1, 2, 3, and 4. But when they're all read, it's ready to rock. I used to run my BBS with a seven disc version of these. Like I said, it was a big external honking thing, five and a quarter 
loud, chunky, conka, conka, conk. It was really neat. I could have multiple CD-ROM, 650 mega pop. I'd burn a bunch of software to discs in LHA, zip, whatever, for my PC section or my whatever section, Amiga section, and uh, they could download from different directories. Sometimes they'd queue up multiple files and this thing would be back and forth and back and forth and luckily on modem speeds it wasn't too much of a big deal. This would always be moving back and forth. Um, we're on our final disc now and what we'll do is we'll see the disc changer popped up. I don't need this up. But we'll see all the icons just plop on the screen in a second. Five CDs. The music CD, title unknown, I think it's Slayer, uh, Aminet, Aminet 5, and a couple of uh, bit rot protection CDs. I got the old uh, book out, and I got the old uh, schematics out. I don't know if you can see that, it's white on white. And what I want to do is I want to wire this into this. So the game plan is to tickle a wire on each of these dudes something like this Whoa. come on focus you piece of garbage camera yeah that looks not good alright so it's the center resistor 234 and 243 okay so let's take a little closer look at my flipping mess but no, I actually did a good job. I had to trim the wires a little bit. I don't know if this has a macro function, but I doubt it. So you can see here that 240, let me stick myself in the hand again. So 244 right here, I just took a blob of solder like a fat man and just tickled the end here. And I did the wrong one, of course, so I had to do the right one. And then this guy's just a fat ball of shit at the end of this resistor. And it's not touching anything else. This probably is, and I probably need to just just double check that one. And that's good enough. Yeah, I don't think it's touching anything. I'll do some of them uh, continuity tests. I think they're all connected anyway. It really doesn't matter. But that's going to be that, and I'm going to ground this out to something that's ground. There's plenty of grounds around. I'll find one to stick it on that like maybe there or there or wherever the heck. I don't know. And I got myself on order the Rev uh, 4.1 GVP ROM for this card. You can't do a 7 on this one. But the 4 one's got the adapted code for larger junk that I won't use, but I wanted it. So let me uh, let me bottle this up. Back on the steady stick. Hoya. Okay, that looks not good. Okay, in a sheer balancing act here, I got some uh, Christian music that I'm going to attempt to play a couple seconds of. So it works. It just took forever. But now I have CD audio. Cool. So I'm going to get this mounted in the chassis. And uh, here we go. We got our teeth knocked out here. Took her tooth out and uh, put the old drive in its place. We got the old flash floppy 3.1.6, and we can go into ASM CDFS, run ASM tunes, press play. It'll read the CD, and I should get some audio if it thinks about it. Awesome. So we know it works. I'm gonna jam out. I hope this helps you. Put some CD audio in your Amiga. 2000 in this case. The 4000's got the pin out, so does the 3. So in your Amiga 2000. Thank you for watching. And as always, I hope you learned something.